the Comedy Kingdom. Hail to the Comedy Kingdom. Hail to the realm of mirth. Here's to our queen. May she live in clover. Here's to her subjects. When we laugh, we laugh all over. Throw away your troubles. Have aside your blue. Just wear a smile. You will find it all the style. In the Comedy Kingdom. A royal welcome to the Comedy Kingdom. We are dedicating the court audience this time to that universal institution of entertainment, an industry that's grown in the short period of a few years to be a tradition the world over. We're celebrating this session of the Comedy Kingdom in honor of the movies. Now, uh, my Prime Minister, Joe Blow, has just been to the modern land of make-believe Hollywood, and we're going to hear a report from him on his findings. Joe Blow! <laughs> Uh, sparkle, sparkle, little twink. Uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star. I uh, know. Uh, how to become a movie star in ten easy lessons. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a beautiful girl who wanted to be a movie star. Yeah, honest there was. <laughs> so she said, Ma, or Mammy, or Mother Dear, I'm going to Hollywood. And she did. I mean, she tried to, uh, well, she started out. <laughs> First, she packed her balloons, or her coot, say, a suitcase. <laughs> she packed her bag. <laughs> then she went hippity-hopping across the country. First, she took two hops, then two hips, and a, uh, no, a hip, hip, uh, hip, hip, hooray! <laughs> I mean, she hitchhiked, or uh, she hitchhiked, or uh, she hitchhiked, uh, she thumbed her way. <laughs> yeah, she did. She thumbed, and she thumbed, and she thumbed. <laughs> Some fun, eh, kid? <laughs> and she met a great big bad snake and a gra- uh, skunk. A uh, wolf. Yeah, a wolf. A great big bad wolf in cheap clothing. A uh, two pair of pants. Uh, didn't cost much. But... And the big bad wolf said, you going my way? Uh, you want to ride? I'll give you a little... He says, get in. <laughs> so they went to Hollywood and poor little Goldilocks, or uh, little Nell, uh, toots. <laughs> she couldn't get in the studio, so he huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed and he... Uh, boy, was he huffy. <laughs> and he blew down the casting office and the casting director said... My, what great big eyes you have. And she says, huh, you're telling me. Oh, no, she said, uh, the better to see you. Uh, she said, the better, uh, the better. How do I know what she said? <laughs> and he called the director, and the director says, uh, how's tricks? Oh, she's fine, thanks. Oh, no. He says, uh, would, would you like to be in pictures? And she said, why, well, I haven't been introduced to you. Uh, no, she said, oh, I'd love to be in pictures and have a great, big, strong he-man to take me in his arms and crush me and crush me. <laughs> you don't want a man, you want a concrete mixer. <laughs> so we married her, and they lived in Hollywood ever after, and we're very, very happy <laughs> for 15 minutes. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Blow is always the ambassador of smiles to our comedy kingdom. Well, now, some music. Where are my yodelers three? Ah, oh, there they are. Phil, you look a little blue and downhearted. That'll never do in this court. Phil, what's the matter? You look like a director who's lost his yes man. Oh, my girl doesn't love me anymore. Oh, now, that's 
too bad. Why doesn't she love you, Phil? Because my chest doesn't go up and down like the heroes in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, here, Phil. We can't have anything like that in the comedy kingdom. Just remember, not only in the movies, but in life, too, there's always a happy ending. Can't you do something to cheer him up, boys? Sure. There's always a happy ending In every talking picture you see Where the boy takes the girl in his arms Same as you and me There's always a tender love song In every talking picture they do Where the boy sings a song to the girl Like I sing to you Sometimes they have a quarrel, one breaks the other's heart. After they've had their quarrel, love plays the same old part. There's always a happy ending in every talking picture you see. Where the boy gets a kiss and the girl gets a kiss, just the same as you and me. A tender love song in every talking picture they do. Where the boy sings a song to the girl like we sing to you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they have a quarrel. One breaks the other's heart. After they've had their quarrel, love plays the same old part. And they make up. There's always. While you're looking at a close-up of your leading lady, don't be an extra. Don't do a fade-out. Take a long shot. Take her out on location and play that love scene like a trooper. Shut a uh, cut. Oh, my prime minister. <laughs> uh, what is it, PM? A uh, pale old bean. I mean, hail old queen. Yes. There's a great plan. Uh, uh, a great, uh, great, uh, there's a great man from Polyrood. Uh, Pulley Rod. Uh, Vine Street. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he's a director. He raves at Claudia. Uh, he wants to speak with your subjects. Oh, who is he? Maury Amsterdam. <laughs> Well, here I am, you lucky people. This is J. Barry Moore Amsterdam, America's sweetheart. Well, Queenie, I understand this program's about moving pictures. And as I said, you're lucky I'm here. In fact, I just rushed here from Hollywood just to do this program. I've been out at the studios for six months now, looking for work. I, uh, I did a little doubling work, though. You know that, uh, well, you, you know what a double is. A fella does all the dangerous tricks for the big stars. Remember that picture, Green Apples? I doubled for cramps. I was terrific. <laughs> and, uh, acting, acting isn't all I do. I also write plays. I used to send all of my plays into the big producers. Now I tear them up myself. In fact, they have thrown so many of my plays in a waste paper basket, I'm getting fan mail from the studio janitors. <laughs> but nothing discourages me. I just wrote a new one. You've no doubt seen that picture dedicated to aviation, the China Clipper. My play is dedicated to the foot doctors of America. It's called the toenail clipper. Now, the first scene... <laughs> Now, the first scene opens in a gambling den in Scotland. Too bad it's not an hour program. I'd wait for the last. Now, the next play, as the scene opens, we see the Scotchman throwing money all over the place. Name of that scene is a miracle. Now, the next scene opens on the Brooklyn Bridge and shows our little hero, Abe, and his sweetheart, Anna, and they just had an argument, and Abe goes one way and Anna goes the other way. Get the idea? You actually see Abe and Anna split. You know why everybody groans when they hear a pun? They didn't think of it first. Now, the next scene... The next scene is the last... Pl- this is a fast play. Right into the last scene already where Aunt Min dies. Aunt Min has a long nose, a schnoz. And in this last scene, she, she turns over in her sleep, her nose gets caught in her ear, and she sneezes and blows her brains out. Well, it's gruesome, but it's a living. Oh, oh hello. Oh, hello. This is Mabel Todd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you was talking about moving pictures, so I got here right in the nick of time. Mm-hmm. You see, I got the moving picture guess the rules that a game I made up all by myself. Moving picture guess the rules? Hey, you see, I think of the name of some moving picture, and you tried to guess what it is, only I sort of give you a hint. And here is the hint. 
When we was in Los Angeles, my dog got his tail caught in the door of the car. Yeah. And when we was in San Francisco, Francisco, he got his tail caught in the door of the car again. Let's see, in Los Angeles, he got his tail caught in the door of the car again. That's supposed to represent the name of a movie? Yeah, Bo, can you handle it? <laughs> no, I'm afraid I can't. What's the picture? Tale of Two Cities. Get right? oh. that sort of... Get that sort of cut the mustard up. I'm gonna... You know, Mabel, I, I think one of us is crazy. I'm glad it ain't me. <laughs> now, now, here's another one. What movie is this? You. Me? Yeah, you. Give up. All right. What movie do I represent? Imitation of Life. <laughs> All right, boys. A little music, please. Doesn't like a peacock, feels like a millionaire. There are things that I would like to do. Chances I have had a very few. Now that I'm in love, I feel gay. Must express my feelings in just this way. Talk 